There are things in this world worth fighting and dying for. We're warriors. It's who we are. It's what we do. Those three musketeers. I came to Paris to be one of you. D'Artagnan, you want to be a musketeer? This is your chance. All right, man, so you are familiar with Three Musketeers. You know, uh, first written by the great Alexandre Dumas. Uh, no, I, I, I'm more familiar with the candy bar than okay. I am with the story. <laughs> Honestly, I, I've never seen a Three Musketeers movie. Okay. Never. Well, yeah. well, th- this one, this version is written by the great Alexandre Dumbass. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because this, is, this is just silly. Just, oh, yeah. That's probably, that's probably why I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. I, I have to say, though. It's not as bad as I thought it would be going in. This is because this is a Paul W. S. Anderson movie. Yes. Not, not to be confused with Paul Thomas Anderson. <laughs> yes. This is the Paul Thomas Anderson, yeah. the one who the critics love. Paul W. S. <laughs> Anderson, the one that make, creates a bunch of bullshit most exactly. of the time. Exactly. He's brought you such classics as Mortal Kombat yes. and, of course, Resident Evil. Yes, <laughs> so. Resident, Resident Evil, uh, Alien vs. Predator. Oh, that person. is right. Yeah. I keep trying to forget that classic. Yes. But the, yes. The, <laughs> the wonderful remake of Death Race. <laughs> oh, of course. How, can I, how could I forget? <laughs> oh All these classics, man. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And boy, he took a classic and he made it into another classic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> took it out, he ate it, and shit it right out. He yeah. reclassified it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, this is this is uh, another reimagining of the Three Musketeers. There's been several film versions of this. Mm-hmm. The latest one, I think, came out in 1993 from mm-hmm. Disney. But this version right here, so far, out of all these adaptations that we have, mm-hmm. this one is the most poorly reviewed, a poorly received version. Really? Because I, I've always poorly reviewed these movies without <laughs> even watching them because I'm just like, I cannot buy the premise of the Three Musketeers. It's a, three guys dressed up like Prince out doing <laughs> swashbuckling where I'm like, I think they're more concerned about their clothes than they are about fighting. And yeah. those big hats with the feathers, I'm just like, I'm sorry, but how do you go swashbuckling wearing all that get up and not like tripping over yourself and, and like falling and having your enemies just stab you to death? You know? Or how can you walk out of that and your enemies just not laugh at you. I, I know, right? Even worse. Yeah. I mean, I mean how, got, can you, how, how do you expect anybody to take you seriously dressed up like a bunch of ass clowns? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just never got I never got the appeal of the Three Musketeers. I think the people who could buy it the most are pimps. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. They, see those, they see the Three Musketeers come out and they're like, they like that guy Superman. Woo! That's a badass <laughs> suit, boy. Yeah, that's a bad outfit. That's Ooh. a bad outfit. Because think about it. They got them big ass boots. The, uh-huh. That, that that long ass feather that's coming out. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm like that does not seem threatening. I'll, I'll laugh at you as you as before I kill you. I have to laugh at you and walk away. I'm I, like, yeah. come on, man. <laughs> You'd win because yeah. I would be. You would you would make me laugh myself to death. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't beat up on the handicapped, and I sure as hell don't beat up on the three musketeers because those guys got problems. <laughs> but you're right. They make they make a wonderful candy though. <laughs> yeah, I know they do. Boy, that chocolate is delicious. That chocolate is delicious. <laughs> the, yeah, man. This this movie right here. It is, and you said it yourself, Mm -hmm. a lot of people are saying it, this is a blatant attempt to recreate a franchise that's riding off the heat of Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean has been out for so goddamn long. you like, man, you guys kind of missed the boat on it. But at the same time, I'm like, you know what? As silly and as retarded as as this movie was, I actually enjoyed it. (laughs) It, Well, I'll tell you what's... What Paul W. S. Anderson does in every movie, when it comes to story, I can tell you what he's saying. I could give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> None of his movies. I think the closest he's ever had to a story mm-hmm. is in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, Death Race. Death but Race. Death, but Death Race is, you know, that's an adaptation of an old movie. He, he was handed a script. I think he still mm-hmm. managed to kind of mess that up. But yeah. But I like. I actually like Death Race. One thing we can't agree on is that those Resident Evil movies. Are shit. They are. They are complete shit. Yes. Yeah. And it, it's because Paul W. S. Anderson really does not care about the story. He cares more about how 
how cool things look. Yeah, how, you know how can I, how, how can I make these creatures from the game look cool on the screen? He he cares more about making those bosses, the bosses from the Resident Evil games, look as magnificent as they do. But that's all he gives a shit about. That's all it's he, like, cares he don't know. About. He, he don't care. He don't care the origin, how they got involved in this. All he knows is he needs to make a grand entrance with one of those goddamn bosses. They, yeah, they just yeah. pop out of nowhere <laughs> to, to make that stupid audience go, "Wow!" wow. <laughs> just like the video just game. Just like the game. And another. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to have any explanation for them. No. Those fools just come out of nowhere. No, those motherfuckers just walk on the lot, just walk into frame, and boom, we got a movie right there. Yeah. <laughs> I think they have the guy who's dressed up in that costume. Yeah. He's eating at the craft services table, and they still filming him, man. They just film yeah. eating. He looks cool doing that. Yeah, they that. go, me, like, why don't you go dance around him? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and that's another thing. He loves slow motion. Mm-hmm. He loves showing people dodging CG bullets and objects in slow motion mm-hmm. and he loves his wife Mila Jolovich and he loves putting her in movies and and, and just showing those legs and that ass and that cleavage <laughs> as much as he and, can. And throwing her ass through corridors. Yeah. Just like I mean the thing is this movie should have been called The Three Musketeers codename Resident Evil 6. Yeah. Fucking more corridors. <laughs> oh that's, what, that's another thing he loves. He loves corridors and long hallways yeah. with traps in them. With traps, yeah, because I'm like every time Mila Jovovich is in this movie, she's playing Alice. I mean, she is she's not playing from Resident lady. Evil. Yes. She is playing the, the character from Resident Evil Alice. I mean, every goddamn scene is a Resident Evil scene with her thrown in this Three Musketeers movie. Yeah. It's so blatant, it's so stupid, but I loved every minute of it. Yeah, she, she, she comes to not one, but two hallways, oh, and yeah. both of them have traps. It was like, if the, anybody remembers that first Resident Evil movie mm-hmm. where you had that long corridor with the laser trap in it, mm-hmm. they got two parts in this movie oh, with yeah. that in there. Oh, and, and, and believe they, me. They even did that in, in uh, Alien vs. Predator. This guy loves hallways with traps. Yeah, Don't ever go to his house <laughs> and go down a hallway when I ask him first, because he got to cut the trap button off. You know? <laughs> Because if you try to go to the bathroom, your ass is going to die. I know. Like, <laughs> cut to pieces. I know. That motherfucker loved that Indiana Jones movie. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> that was his favorite fucking part of that movie. That's probably the only part. If he remakes that, that's all he's going to remake. That scene, which he's already done 20 times. But I also loved how they always had that shot of Mila Jovovich standing on a tall building, looking as regal and as goddessy as she, she can. Yes. I mean, I was like, damn, dude, just make a Resident Evil movie already. I bet he had just take... <laughs> He might as well just put up one of his home movies where he just shot her. I'll put up one of his sex films of her. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he could tell that he's really proud of his wife. Man. Oh, dude, he like, fucking loves yeah, just show her. Us your home, you know, just your, your, show us your photographs now, your home <laughs> photographs and shit. <laughs> and, they're but, all, and they're all stills from Resident Evil. Yeah. <laughs> That's all they are. <laughs> At home, you get the feeling like she still dresses up like Alice from yeah. Resident Evil. Yeah. <laughs> She's standing out there posing next to Nemesis during her wedding photos. <laughs> <laughs> She's up there breastfeeding the baby, dressed like Alice yeah. from Resident Evil, man, and doing it in slow motion. She's mm-hmm. grabbing that baby. <laughs> yeah. Bringing that baby slow, t- slow, slow motion to that breast. <laughs> <laughs> that baby like, Boo. See, that's the movie I want to see next. <laughs> <laughs> Except that baby has to go down a hallway to get to that breast. <laughs> oh, my God. With traps. That's, that's his remake of Look Who's Talking. <laughs> <laughs> but this movie, man, I, you know, it's a another it's another case of that there's hardly any story and the big difference here is that we mentioned a lot of movies of his where violence blood gore and with this one he's pulled back to make this more of a family oriented movie Mm -hmm. except that it i guess the coolest thing that drew him to this film again it's the imagery you don't have any monsters but you have a lot of steampunk machinery and inventions mm. and weaponry going on in here. Yeah, which, I mean, it, 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 surprisingly, it works in, in more of like a fantastical Flash Gordon kind of way. The costumes are as elaborate as you can ever find in any of his oh, movies. Where I'm like, yeah. wow, a lot of production went into those costumes. I mean, just by looking at it. And, and, and everything is so colorful. It's almost like looking at a 3D. Like, we, we saw it in 3D. And that's mm-hmm. kind of how it, it looked, even though the 3D wasn't used effectively. It kind of looked like you were looking through a, one of those Viewmasters, you know? It, you know Images what? just popped out with color. Yeah. You, that, but it really, it wasn't all that effective. It wasn't great, but, you know, it's, it, I would say it's just, it's slightly better than average. One thing I can say about, you know, again, about Paul W.S. Anderson's movies is that there, there are a few scenes where he uses the 3D effectively. And you're right. I'll mention why the 3D doesn't work, and it's one of my biggest problems with the film. But there were about three or four parts where I was like, that's pretty cool. There was even one part where mm-hmm. just a rope th- 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 uh, flew towards the screen you, and you were like whoa <laughs> Yo, that, was, that was a gun she was it a gun yeah, yeah she, threw she, threw it, she threw a gun and the gun just you you could barely see it but i just saw it in the corner of the screen just go whoosh, 
And I was like, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, it's funny because he tries to actually stick in his own fantastical way. He tries mm-hmm. to stick to the serialization of, of the three Musketeers, mm-hmm. at least, or at least the, I, I guess the first book or few books. I mean, he does. Cause yeah, yeah with the, Three Musketeers, I believe, starts out with young D'Artagnan, who is not a Three Musketeer. He's on his way to France, uh, Paris, actually, to mm-hmm. to meet with the actual Three Musketeers, mm-hmm. uh, Athos, Aramis, and Aramis and Porthos. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 Kodo, Podo, Kodo, and, Pudo, yeah, Falcor and Atreyu. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to remember these guys' names because I'm like, during the review, I'm gonna have to remember these motherfuckers' names, and I'm like, I don't fucking, I don't know. fucking <laughs> yeah. know. I just said, yeah, yeah. Uh, all I know that their names sound like colognes. I know. I was like, I know. And I was like, wait a minute, aren't, aren't there supposed to be three of them? Like, what, yeah. Where'd this fourth guy come from? When is I'm, he going to die? Yeah. Yeah. Shit, I'm in my bathroom looking at my shelf trying to remember who the three musketeers are. I, know. I got Aramis, you know. What's yeah, I know, one of these guys don't belong. Yeah, uh, Aramis, Safeguard, yeah. and Dove Soap. <laughs> and Scope. There you, <laughs> there you go. Three, no, they played respectively in this movie by Matthew McFadden, Luke Evans, and one of my favorite actors who I don't see enough today is uh, Ray Stevenson. Yeah. Who was at one time the Punisher. Mm-hmm. Last time we saw him was, I think, in Thor. It was Thor, yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. He was playing pretty much the same character. And, and I like what they did. Yeah. Yeah, he, oh, he was. He yeah. played just a big old strong warrior guy. Mm-hmm. You know, just the, hanging the big out. burly guy. Yeah. Want to drink some beers and fuck some chicks, you know? Yeah, there ain't no consequences in his world. He's just hanging yeah. out with the A-team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I, and I, I like the way they set the Musketeers apart at first. All of them in the movie have been somewhat rendered obsolete by the government. The the cardinal in the movie who is played by the Jew hunter. The Jew, the, yeah, the Jew hunter. Christoph huh? Waltz. There you go, yeah, Christoph yes. Waltz. Okay, yeah, he uh, he plays the cardinal. You know, he doesn't like these musketeers, man. And because they've he's kind of brought pressure down on them, I mean, they've been ruled obsolete. Right. They, they're not really used that much. They're sort of outlaws. And all of them have their own personalities, like Athos. Athos, because he's got no more adventures to go on and just mm-hmm. sitting around drinking. He's all jaded right now. He's mm-hmm. pissed off. He don't believe in love, yeah. people, or, mm-hmm. or honor, or anything. He believes in just drinking and being pissed. He's kind of he's kind of like the fucking James Bond of the group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then Aramis is sort of the ponderous religious guy. He's mm-hmm. He also sees himself as not being very useful, but at the same time, he's peaceful now. <laughs> and then you just have Porthos, who... Like I said, he just he don't give a fuck. He's no, just he, like, hey man, I'm, if I if I can get drunk, yeah. <laughs> I'm all right. Can I still drink? I'm he's a, cool. He's a drunk thing, and yeah. <laughs> his Fantastic Four. Yeah. yeah, and I guess they finally find their cause. And this was where the story starts to like, I guess, deviate away from the from the original. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, I guess, a, a double crossing. Uh, Treacherous whore who comes mm-hmm. to the scene, mm-hmm. uh, played by Mila Dolovich, who is called Milady. Also, Alice. Yeah, yeah and also, yeah, <laughs> might as well just be Alice in this movie. I guess the biggest plot in this film is that she ends up stealing some jewels mm-hmm. at the order of the Cardinal, mm-hmm. so that they have this plan to throw France and Britain into this big war, mm-hmm. and. It doesn't really matter because, as I said, everything in this movie is silly. I mean, and it's so and it's yeah. so like spoon fed to you so quickly oh, that before yeah. you before you figure out what is actually going on, there's a big battle on the screen for you. Yeah. You know, so they, they, <laughs> they yeah they don't waste any time, which I'm like, you know, good because <laughs> I, I don't want to watch these guys riding on horses and, and hanging out like you know being being cool guys with the ridiculous costumes that they wear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's. A lot that I was liking about this movie before. I mean, I was liking how all of the Three Musketeers had their own personality. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I want to see how that came into play in their adventures later on the film. I want to see how each of their personalities would help in getting through their problems. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. okay, we know that they can like fight their way out of anything. In the beginning mm-hmm. of the movie, it has them fighting 40 guys like it's nothing. Mm-hmm. But I want to see how they, how they would come together and work as a team and how all their differences would somehow make them work as one unit. Mm-hmm. And... I never. I, that's my problem with the film. I, I did not have. You never got that. You're tours. absolutely right. I mean, because you know what, this film treated them like the Captain Jack Sparrow of the first Pirates movie, where it's like, he, for some reason, he's the one that really st- sticks out. But they want to m- focus the main story on the new guy, on Orlando which, Bloom. On the, uh, yeah, on the uh, Orlando Bloom, Bloom character who is yeah. actually in this movie playing a bad guy, the Duke of Buckingham. The Duke of Buckingham. Yeah. yeah. You're either gonna be able to accept this movie. For as silly as it is, because within that silliness, almost every character in this movie is 
very much a cartoon. Oh, very and, much. And yeah. especially him because he just comes on being slimy. He mm-hmm. he comes on is like, well, I'm British and I'm an asshole and I'm <laughs> going to talk like one. Yeah. And every every line he says is mm, like <laughs> yeah. this. And I can see some people like saying that is so badly written, so badly acted. But you and I, and it is. But mm-hmm. it's. But it's funny. He may, you know what? Whatever bad dialogue, because I'm, I mean, it's, it's there's stuff. There's some pretty stupid like Saturday morning cartoon dialogue in here. <laughs> yes. I mean, but he makes it. He really makes it work. I think. I think this is the role where he was like, you know what? This is where I get to do my Johnny Depp thing, or yeah. I really get to exaggerate the evil of this, of what this guy is, uh, to a cartoonish level, to where I was loving the guy every moment he was on screen. I was loving him, but the problem was is that he was hardly in it. You know? It is a very much a one-dimensional villain i mean there's two things that work for Mm -hmm. one i don't think i've seen orlando bloom have this much personality in anything you're absolutely (laughs) right yeah i was like man i mean hey do it whatever you're doing that now i'm interested because like orlando bloom ever since legolas he's been playing the same fucking guy throughout all his all his movies which i'm like that's too bad because i thought the legolas character in the lord of the rings was a badass character and when you see him, you're just like, oh, okay, you're just you're just being lazy now. Yeah. But with this, he was like, he was actually trying to milk it for what it was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, and he it said, works. if I got to play as slimy and you're going to give me this bad dialogue, mm-hmm. I'm going to try and turn it into yeah. something. I'm going to be as ridiculous and slimy mm-hmm. as I can with this. And you could tell he was having a lot of fun oh, just man. playing this character. You could really tell. Yeah. The other thing that works for him is that he talks shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, he gets <laughs> off this big steampunk airship that they mm-hmm. built from Leonardo da Vinci's plans in this movie. Mm-hmm. I love the way today everybody takes Leonardo da Vinci's <laughs> ideas and just exaggerate them. Oh, you know? yeah, man. Yeah. I- I'm surprised nobody's like gone like full steam ahead with that whole like a world, just the entire world just based on Leonardo da Vinci's like s- all, yeah. all his concepts. I'm surprised yeah. we ain't, we don't have a Transformers movie based <laughs> out know, of based Leonardo on da Vinci's that. robots. Yeah. You know? I've, al- I've always wanted to see that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he, that dude steps off this airship and he's just talking mad shit against <laughs> King Louis, you know, King he comes up, it's like, because King Louis is like, oh, I got to be, you know, I got to be fashionable like those people in London who are coming over here. Uh, the Duke of Buckingham gets off there and he's like, oh, green. <laughs> that was fashionable one time, I believe a year, two years <laughs> oh, maybe yeah, yeah, in London. Two, oh, yeah. but we've moved on now, asshole. <laughs> no. and, then, and then fucking Louis is like... Oh, uh, don't I feel like an asshole? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, he just rubbed it in that guy's yeah. face. He's like looking around, like, Ooh. <laughs> oh well, I guess retro is in in France. Yeah. It is. I mean, the line is bad, man, it, but he it makes is. it work. But those scenes, the scenes, especially with him and Louis interacting, I mean, wow, I wasn't expecting those scenes to pop as much as they did because the actor playing King Louis, Freddie Fox, Freddie Fox, man, I mean, that was another character I was actually loving uh, throughout the whole movie. Every time he was on the screen, I'm like, this guy just like popped out of a Monty Python movie on. Yeah. He was, I mean, that's what it felt like. <laughs> yeah. He's dressing up like a gay leprechaun yeah. through, through most of the movie. Yeah. But again, that's the guy that came on. I was groaning, man. I was rolling mm-hmm. my. I was roll. I wasn't rolling my eyes. I was rolling my head. I was like, oh, because <laughs> yeah. he comes on. He's like. What is this? Oh, I heard that they're wearing different fashions in London. Can't you people do anything right? Do I have to do it myself? No, no, no. And I was, yeah. like, and I was like, man, I don't. I hate this character. But the second scene he came on in, uh-huh. and that's one of the things that works well with the uh, with the movie too, is that not everybody is against the Musketeers. In fact, most people are for the Musketeers, mm-hmm. and that's the reason why like the Cardinal can't do anything because yeah. King Louis comes on. He's like, I heard you killed forty of my men. <laughs> I hope you saved a few. Yeah. I know, you he's guys like, are awesome. He's- that sounds bad as. <laughs> you call the like, oh, I, how, how could I have missed this? <laughs> give give the, each of these men a gold piece and a lollipop for their troubles. Yeah. Yeah. And that was cool because they were like King Louis, like real life action figures. Yeah. <laughs> His Majesty the King. <clears throat> Brawling with the Cardinal's guards. It's very bad. What have you got to say for us? We humbly uh, beg your pardon. Your Majesty. Yes. Yes, I should hope so, too. So, t- tell me, how many were involved in the altercation? There were four of us against 40 of them, Your Majesty. Four against 40? Or was it 400? Just 40, Your Majesty. It was an off day. 
<laughs> they do yeah. badass shit like that. That that yeah. those guys were like his video game. Like, yeah, that was his <laughs> entertainment. Yeah, that was the entertainment. And, yeah, and just hearing him like banter back and forth with the Cardinal, looking on like, God damn it, I can't ever win. Jesus, <laughs> yeah. man. I know because he was just kind of like, well, shouldn't, shouldn't you punish them a little harsher, your your honor? I mean, uh, your highness. And, yeah. and I like the queen comes in and just like. Cardinal, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, man, you know, I, I like the Musketeers. I especially enjoyed, like, Ray Stevenson and Matthew McFadden, man. Mm. I love those those characters in the movie. Uh, it was, I would say that Aramis, or Aramis, played by Luke Evans, who we're going to see in Immortals not too long. Oh, really? And he's All also, right. gonna, you know, you talk about Legolas. I think he's going to mm-hmm. be in The Hobbit. Oh, no as, shit. Okay. That's Bart the, the hunter or whatever. But all right. I don't think we saw a whole lot of him mm-hmm. at all. And that's what I'm saying about as more the movie goes on, we don't really see those characters at, enough and get to love them as the, as the musketeers who are. I mean, the movie's called Three Musketeers. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to do like a swashbuckling steampunk version of them. Then mm-hmm. put them in and let's see them. I thought the middle of the movie was slow because we didn't get to see them. And Logan Lerman, who's D'Artagnan, in the beginning of the movie, I thought he was just way too cocky. Hockey, man, mm. too much of an upstart. He, you might have, if you don't remember him, he was Percy Jackson. Uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, and the greatest I, movie of all time. Of so. all times, <laughs> man. Right? I, no, not quite up there with those Paul W. S. Anderson <laughs> yeah. classics, but up there. You know. I thought they were better than you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh well, yeah. No, no, you don't want to piss off anybody. Wanna, yeah. uh, <laughs> don't want to start uh, that war. We want, we want to talk about that wizard that you don't like. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> he who shall not be named. A lot of the middle of the movie was slow because they were dealing with the politics setting up for that. They were busy with Mila Jolovich's character who mm-hmm. I just didn't find her all that interesting. No, no. She was she was the least interesting but you know the scenes that they had her in it was real quick and like I said it was completely re- it was like a Resident Evil scene. It was like they just filmed a Resident Evil scene in the 17th century and then they moved on to something yeah. else to where she wasn't there enough to annoy me. Every moment when this movie got slow I think that's where the actors kind of took me by surprise and just acting as ridiculous as they did, it really kind of entertained me in, in a way that's not good, almost almost to the point where it's so bad it's good. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was moving fast enough to where I, I didn't feel like I was bored or I'm like, okay, where is this going? Even when the Musketeers weren't on, I really didn't miss them that much because, like I said, I was never a fan of theirs anyway, so it's not like I was like, oh, man. you know, I know Cyrus <laughs> loves the fucking shit out of these oh, Musketeer yeah. movies, so I know he's going to be pissed. But me, I'm like, you know what? Watch, watching this gay king you know, <laughs> get worried about his fucking wardrobe, I, I'm laughing my ass off of you. Yeah, it's, it's silly, yeah. man. It's it stupid. Is. It's, I, I just thought that the silliness <laughs> took over more than the adventure part. I will say that I did think that the climax, again, blatant Pirates of the Caribbean ripoff. Mm-hmm. It's, it's Pirates of the Caribbean in the sky. It was, but you know what? I thought that part was just fun visually. I mean, I was like, wow, this is actually kind of cool looking. Yeah. It kind of saved the movie for me. I'm like, okay, well, you're taking it to this whole other level that y- anybody else making the Three Musketeers oh, yeah. wouldn't ever dare to take it. Imagine yeah. like Baron von Munchausen. Yeah. Or Imagine like, because like, there's these two huge airships in the sky. They're basically pirate ships mm-hmm. supported by these big zep- yeah, Zeppelin like balloons. balloons. Yeah. And they have th- this cannon battle up in the sky. And mm-hmm. I have to say, man, visually, it it looked cool. I mean, and they do some clever things like they fight in the air, first of all, and then they take the fight into the middle of a thunderstorm. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was some uh, some some inspired ideas by that. Yeah. And, it, and, you know, visually, it was pretty cool. I it wish was. it more the movie had been that because from the trailer, mm-hmm. that's why I wanted to see the movie because I thought mm-hmm. like, oh, they're going to have all these cool Leonardo da Vinci inspired, the steampunk inspired and mm-hmm. uh, imagery going on through the whole thing. And, and, and they didn't most of the time. No, no. But, but I, I tell you what, though, what? There, there was a scene where you see that, that airship just fly by <laughs> and there's nothing going on. I laugh my ass off because I, for some reason I had a moment where I'm like, OK, I'm waiting for that Terry Gilliam foot to come out of the sky. <laughs> like, like, yeah, I mean, the Holy Grail, Monty Python's Holy Grail, something like that to happen because it just looks so silly. It looks so rid- rid- fucking ridiculous. Ridiculous, and I just started laughing. I was like, dun, 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 I was waiting for one of like a building to pop up with sails on it. <laughs> you know, just, it, it just looked that fucking stupid. But I mean, I, I have to admit, dude, I, I had I had a blast. I mean, I'll even go as far as saying this is probably like the most fun I've had watching uh, a Paul W S Anderson film. Really. Yeah, yeah, for a movie that if he doesn't really care about the story. Doesn't give a shit. Be, yeah, yeah. yeah babe, what am I trying to say? I don't yeah. give a shit. I mean, because the movie, if you're somebody who, you're a literary person, you 
admire, you love, you cherish the Three Musketeers. This movie took a big shit all over. Okay, <laughs> yeah. and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I'm just saying that the yeah. uh, even as a film, the mm-hmm. the accents are everywhere. Yeah. They range from <laughs> fake French to English. To, they're not even to, trying to, to American. Dude. Yeah, they're, they're they don't not give even trying. <laughs> yes, they even said one one of the characters said uh, in French after the guy's been speaking English. English yeah, and then he says, uh, "Can you say that in French?" Yeah, he says it in English. <laughs> it, it was a, you know, but you, again, if you want to, if you really want to stretch it and use your imagination, it's one of those movies where we know they're in France, mm-hmm. we know they're speaking English. It's for dumbasses who don't speak it, French, it and it's is, like, hey, it all right, just yeah. you know, just imagine that everybody understands each other. Mm-hmm. They, they're just translating it for you. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's like the dumbest comic book version of, of the Three Musketeers. <laughs> yeah. It really is. It, it some of it actually reminded me of a uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Some of these ideas in here, I'm like, okay, I, it seems like they got like some hints. Probably not, but I mean, it felt like watching that movie, even though that movie's just fucking terrible across the yeah. board. Yeah, uh, yeah, oh yeah, that movie's it, awful, man. Yeah, yeah, this is this is way better than mm-hmm. that. And, I, and as silly as those costumes were, man, I thought the costumes were they look great. They, they look cool. Yeah, hey man, back then you you got to admire that those dresses. <laughs> shit, every no matter how old you were, no matter how sagging your boobs were. Mm-hmm. No matter if you were a man, yeah. if you put those dresses on, instant cleavage. <laughs> oh my God, Prince and the Revolution! If they if they got transported back then, that boy, they that would have would, a field it'd be Christmas. It'd be Christmas every day. <laughs> yeah, shit. You could put you could put one of them dresses on a cat. <laughs> yeah. That cat would have titties all of a sudden, no, boy. Shit. I mean, yeah. The, no, the costumes for uh, everybody. You know, most mm-hmm. you know, men and women in the movie were impressive, yeah. and I'll, some of the CG while. Some of it was obvious. It was some of it was bad, but a lot of it is used for. If it's no weren't for like some of the the airships and stuff in the film that was used for recreating like the seventeenth century uh, imagery of cities like mm-hmm. uh, Paris and, and small countrysides and things like that. And that, mm-hmm. some of it looked cool, some of it looked fake. You could tell some of it looked like uh, actual paintings, almost like matte paintings. I, I, yeah, almost. matte paintings where they were just like, you know what. Matt paintings look cool. Just leave that shit alone. Yeah, just you know, that, that, we just need to tell them where the fuck we are. You know, yeah. right Paris across the screen. All right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I never really felt any kind of danger in the movie because, I mean, the, the musketeers, they, you know, they come in and kill people and it's just like nothing. Yeah, no it, big deal. It's no big deal. I mean, even when they were, even when they were killing like the royal guards, the mm-hmm. king would come out like, oh, you killed my man? <laughs> Have some more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but you know, that's what I love about the movie because, I mean, it tells you immediately like the tone it's going to take, especially when you see fucking... Mila Jovovich playing Alice going through the Resident Evil corridor. Oh, yeah. I mean, that tells you from the get-go what, what to expect. Yeah, it does. Yeah. No, I, I have to say, I, if I'm correct in reading you right now, mm-hmm. I think that you are probably a little more enthusiastic about about this movie than I am. I, I don't think the movie is all that bad. I just don't think that it met its creative potential. It showed a lot of promise. If it was going to do that thing of have, of doing like a reimagining of The Three Musketeers and combining it with some steampunk theme that's going on in it i mean almost to the point where it's almost like van helsing or something mm-hmm. a remake of van helsing I, I would say you know run with that just go crazy with it and i don't think that they did that completely mm-hmm. here but this movie it still has an element of fun to it, if, it yeah. e- even if it doesn't have enough of the musketeers there's, a, there's enough there to, to even just if you take this as a sort of a family film comedy mm-hmm. i think it's enough for me to recommend it as a high rental. Oh yeah, I mean this movie—it's been getting terrible reviews, and I was expecting to loathe it. I was really like, I, I did not want to like this because, like, I mean, like I said, I'm not a fan of the Three Musketeers. I just don't get it. And I was like, man, they've—they've they've redone this movie so many goddamn times. And I've never heard anyone ever tell me, you know, there is one particular Three Musketeers movie that you have to watch. It is the one. It is the Batman Begins of the series. Yeah. Never heard that. And I wasn't expecting it with that with, uh, with this movie. But I tell you what, if Lady Gaga ever directed a Three Musketeers movie, this is what I expect it to be. <laughs> I mean, really, this is what I expected it to be. And it's ridiculous and retarded as it, is, as it is. I had a lot of fun with this. Yeah. I mean, just I, I, how stupid it is. Would I recommend it to anybody? No. But you know what? If you were fucking bored and, and there was only two movies to fucking watch which is this and meek's uh cut off then i say w- watch, go watch this, this. <laughs> go watch this and i'd, I'd pay matinee it, would, it, it, i, I yeah. definitely think it's a matinee and, film, and yeah. you know what if in I, every sense of the word if yeah. i wasn't expecting more of it and thought it could have been more imaginative i would even say matinee man mm-hmm. it's it's 
really is not as terrible as people are saying. It's, no. It, it, if, yeah, if you want to take it straight from the novel, it's a piece of shit. Yeah. It's, it's like, <laughs> but if it, as just a movie on its own, come on, man. I know. It's I, like, I, mean, it, I used to watch yeah. a cartoon of the Three Musketeers on, the, mm. on this show called The Banana Splits years ago. <laughs> oh, I mean, there's so many versions <laughs> yeah. of the Three Musketeers out there. Who gives a fuck, I man? I know. It's like you put the Three Stooges in their places, and they're like, come on, man. I mean, really? <laughs> the Three Musketeers is going to get worse than this at some yeah. point. Believe me. they will, and, and it will be done by somebody who's trying to take this material as seriously seriously as they can get you know where they'll just make some boring piece of shit oh that you know know what man that's a that's an excellent point seriously thank you sir i mean no (laughs) if somebody came in and tried to make this seriously Mm -hmm. and messed up that would be a reason to hate it Mm -hmm. but with somebody who's come in and just from the very beginning saying i'm just gonna make a cartoon out of this (laughs) that that's okay you knew what you were doing from the very beginning and they did it i I can't get mad at (laughs) you you know (laughs) shit i'll make some people really mad Mm -hmm. i want to see what paul ws anderson can do with mark twain you know (laughs) know, i want i want to see paul ws anderson's like tom sawyer and huckleberry finn you know (laughs) starring Eddie Murphy started, started Eddie Murphy as a His nigga name. Joe or something. Oh, yeah. I want to see. I want to see Tom Sawyer like having a. You know, he's told to go paint that fence, yeah. and he paints that fence in slow motion, dodging bullets. And he's got to get. Oh, he's got to get. Ooh. He's got to get through a hallway yeah. with traps to reach an apple pie. Yeah. You know, at the end of the t- <laughs> to steal an apple pie. Yeah, man. I can't wait. <laughs> nigga Jim is his name. Oh, <laughs> nigga Jim played by Milo Jovovich. Yeah. We live in a kingdom controlled by fear. The cardinal rules the land. Buckingham rules the skies. When new war machines will readdress the balance. And she is the deadliest assassin the world has ever seen. Together, they will unleash war on the entire continent. We're the Musketeers. It's up to us to put an end to the Cardinal's plot. I could do with some exercise. All for one. And one for all!